Good evening, folks. Welcome to a Weather IQ public update today, the 19th of the 11th, 2025, thanks to our major sponsors, townswoolsheds.com. Uh, Tropical Cyclone Fino upgraded to Category 2 this evening. Still struggling a little bit. Looks pretty nice on satellite on the western side, on the eastern side. Just struggling to close up a bit of deep convection there. I'm sure it will eventually do that. But it's 360 kilometres to the northeast of Darwin this evening, and the system is moving very, very, very slowly towards the east. It'll continue doing that tonight, we suspect, and then tomorrow it should stop that eastward motion, begin moving southwards, and then from Friday expected to continue moving southwards before adopting a southwest to west-southwest track on Saturday. Tropical Cyclone Watch was issued earlier today for the Tiwi Islands, the Coburg Peninsula and parts of the Arnhem coastline. We can still see that there is an error margin as far east as Maningrida, although Maningrida does appear to be a lot less likely this evening compared to yesterday evening. System most likely is going to adopt a track similar to the Bureau of Meteorology's forecast track map there, uh, but there is still a little bit of doubt eastwards and westwards of that point. The biggest doubt eastwards is how fast will this system move east in the next 12 hours or so unless it accelerates significantly I can't see a coastal crossing east of Warrawai uh, and then further westwards though we do see a much larger error margin because that comes down to how sharply does the system turn towards the west southwest or southwest and that is the difficult part of the forecast. The system is likely to be quite small and if you take a look at the destructive wind field here it's about 100 kilometres so 50 kilometres uh, from the centre in any particular direction is what we're expecting the destructive wind. So the system needs to cross within 50 kilometres of you so you witness the destructive winds. Okay so very important to understand the system is going to be very small not quite a, what we call a midget but very small nonetheless. The other thing that complicates the situation a little bit as the cyclone approaches Darwin is the amount of land interaction. We're going to see some land interaction with the Coburg Peninsula, and we're going to see some land interaction with the Tiwi Islands, and potentially some land interaction with the Darwin Daily coastline as well. So there's a little bit of land interaction which can throw a few ebbs and, and little wobbles in the forecast track, but we also have some very warm water here in the Van Diemen Gulf in between those land areas and that'll be another little fascinating component of this especially if it moves over those warm waters where we could see a slight weakening for a few hours and then potentially a redevelopment or a re-strengthening if it can push itself over those warm waters. Computer models are basically telling us that sometime around Friday afternoon, the system should be hitting the coastline Friday afternoon into Friday night. But once again, I draw your attention to a fairly wide swathe. Remember, there's still a fairly wide swathe of where this could go. Sure, the most likely solution is the one the Bureau of Meteorology has penciled in there, but it's not a definite solution. There are still models that pull the system further to the west, and there are still a few models that pull the system further to the east. But generally speaking, this appears appears to be what the Bureau have drawn on their track map appears to be the mid-range solution. As we go through into Saturday, the system is expected to make its closest point of approach to Darwin, and then through Saturday night and Sunday, the system is expected to continue pushing in a southwesterly direction away from the city and into the sparsely populated areas off the western top end and or towards the North Kimberley coast. Intensity forecasts, well, they're very difficult at the moment. We're going to have the land interaction. We're going to have a very small system. Small systems can intensify rapidly, but can also weaken rapidly when they approach land and or if the atmospheric conditions become unfavorable. So they can go both ways here. And that's exactly what the model's telling us doesn't want a bar of trying to pick up intensity. At the moment, it's suggesting Cat 1, Cat 2 is the most likely solution, but you can see there's a number of computer models that continue to suggest maybe Cat 3, even up to Cat 4 uh, potential in some modelling. So it is really all over the place when it comes to intensity, and absolutely, we understand that it's going to be all over the place because of, once again, the potential for land interaction offset by potentially some very good atmospheric conditions as it approaches this land interaction. Now, for Darwin, folks, it's important to understand there's not going to be much weather associated with this system until it's on your doorstep. And that's really important to understand because you're going to get a whole bunch of people that don't know anything about cyclones and weather that are going to go, 
ah, it's nothing. We get nothing. We get nothing. And you will get nothing. You'll get nothing until about Friday night, Saturday morning. That's when things are going to start to ramp up. And then as the Cyclones core approaches you, that's when things will get quite extreme very, very quickly. Because the Cyclones approaching you from that direction, the northeasterly direction, it means that you're not going to see a very long buildup to the system. There's not going to be a lot of rain in the lead up to it. Uh, the rain is all going to hit you all of a sudden as the core comes towards you. The winds initially will be southerly, so once again, you won't feel quite as windy until the core is right at you. So the expectation is things might take a little while to ramp up, but when they ramp up, they're going to do it very quickly. So very, very mindful of that. On the backside, the, the winds are going to turn. They're going to be more northerly, and that means we're going to see a lot of moisture and potential heavy rainfall after the cyclone has crossed you. But also, onshore winds are going to make it sometimes feel windier on the backside of the cyclone than the front side of the cyclone, depending, of course, exactly where it goes. Best case scenario is a cyclone that drifts inland of the coastline and or way to the west out here around the northern parts. And these scenarios are still a possibility, but the far more likely solution, unfortunately, at this, at this moment in time, is the one being pictured here. Understand you have a long time before you will start to see effects of this cyclone. That's why you're not in a cyclone watch yet. The first and earliest signs of the cyclone affecting you uh, Saturday morning. So I suspect you'll be put into a cyclone watch from, uh, from early tomorrow, but that's not my call. We'll leave that to the experts in charge of the warning services. Don't stress, you still have a full day to prepare tomorrow with very little weather effects. You still have a, basically a full day on Friday with very little weather effects, maybe a couple of gusty showers towards the end of the day. You still have two full days of preparation if in case the worst happens and we do see this scenario verify. I'll talk to you again tomorrow evening. Make sure you subscribe and like our YouTube videos uh, to be notified when we post a new one.